Hello everyone and welcome to the Air at Military Collectibles. So in today's video what we're doing is we're at the Cavan Military Show here at the Cavan County Museum. The sun is out for about 10 minutes and we're going to look at their trench display which is absolutely fantastic. So, go on a second now. So yeah, so they've got all these different cutouts, casualty clearance station. Uh, so if we go into the casualty clearance station, um, some poor chaps here. Another little dug out up this side then. Uh, yeah, so here we are. Nice little dugout. Popular stove in the corner. Photos and desk. Out here, out onto the firing line. Here's your firing step. Um, I believe what's I, I believe this trench carries on, but it's under construction, so they have it all blocked off. So we'll just follow on down this way. Yeah. So duck your nut. This is uh, like a cooking area that they would have used. Now we're coming out onto what was the front line, but this is all under construction. As you can see, there's been a bit of weather damage along here, so they're just uh, fixing it. But you can actually stand up here on the parapet and look down. So yeah, now there's the reenactment that's going on in there. Here's all the firing line, you can follow it in along. It said it's under a, a bit of maintenance at the minute. But, uh, yeah, so there you go, more trenches this side. All under maintenance and then there's no man's land over here. So yeah, it's a nice little uh, exhibit. So this is the ball turret, or the rear turret, for the RAF, uh, I think it's a Wellington. Look at the battle damage. Absolutely crazy. Look at the size of the inside of it. So one man sat in here. Let's go back around the front of it again. Yeah, it's literally perspex. And ammo in front here, four guns, and a uh, hope and a prayer. These must be the um, shoots for the spent cartridges. Over here then we have an Alouette, Alouette helicopter, which I would have actually trained in. Believe it or not, not trained in, but trained on, not this exact aircraft. But yes, yeah, so that's the Alouette. Um, I think it was the late 90s early 2000s when these came out of service. This one actually crashed in a, in a lake. That's how it managed to survive. And um, it was taken out and salvaged. So yeah, so that's a little alouette. Also, these were used by the Rhodesians, if I remember correctly, the alouettes. But you can sit in this one, quick cool. What are you going to jacket, yeah? Joystick moves. I don't think there's anything connected. But yeah. Very primitive timber seats in the back. Yeah, so that is the little. And we are again at the Cavan Military Show. We're not Crossley Tender, or a reproduction of a Crossley Tender, in front of the GPO, which is nuts altogether that they actually have. Um, I wouldn't say it's life size, but it's not. It's uh, probably about one third the actual real size of the real GPO. But yeah, it's cool. Some nice little um, 
reenactor stalls, well presented ones like, which is quite nice compared to uh, some other stuff you see at events. We'll just go up around here now and have a look. There's a Polish lid here in the corner, a Polish group in the corner is meant to be very, very good. So here we have the Polish group, they're a bit busy at the minute. And, um, I don't know, Spanish Civil War? Not sure. Something like that. Danny Reese, if you're watching, what the hell is that? I know it's a cockpit, but off what? Some type of a fighter jet, I don't know, it's a two seater anyway. So, in here is another little exhibit. This is what we're looking at. Ben Burb. Rue O'Neill. Uh, so we have some canisters shot in here. We have spur. We have gun barrels. Things like that. Reproduction mortar. More artifacts. Some pottery. Pots. Things like that. So this is a cavern in the War of Independence. So, nice little cabinet here, more little medals. So the War of Independence medal, black what was known as the Black and Tan medal, and then that is the World War II medal. And this building was actually a nunnery in one of its previous lifetimes. It's been a few things. Manor house, nunnery. And this is what a nunnery or a nun's room would have pretty much looked like. Very sparse. Yeah. So more War of Independence displays, First World War. Uh, this is signifying I think the prison. Kilmenum after the yeah prison gates after the um, after the rising was quashed I suppose is what you could call it cabinet here now more artifacts more medals paperwork RIC items. And cuffs, not the dust from pistol. More paperwork, picture of him in the Valera. A mascara to Arthur Griffin. More posters yeah. and stuff on the wall. Uh, British soldiers. More posters. Still more stuff here, here in the more stuff here in this exhibition hall. It's like a timeline going around the top actually of stuff that happened in Kevin. More items. Uh, Mass cards. Adjutant Michael Baxter. Memorial cards for Kathleen Baxter and Michael Baxter. Born by Count Kevin. Tricolor flag. Oh, grenade. Oh, that's that number one. Service medal 1917 to 1921 and Truce Commemoration medal 1921 awarded to Nan Conley Cross Keys, Count Kevin. Number five, Smithy Western 32 revolver found by renovating the Millennium, the Millennium Tavern on Main Street. Oh, so it's found in a pub where you find most guns. Yeah. Back over here. Lots and lots of reading. So we're in here now, this is the second floor. 
This is like First World War exhibitions, expi uh, ex exhibits. Um, some bring backs, trench art, actual shoe, some um, barbed wire, some shot, all mess tin. More stuff here. More stuff, more stuff, more stuff. So as I said, this um, building had lots of, I suppose, jobs in the past, but it was um, a lodge, a Masonic lodge at one point in time. So here we have their, uh, I don't know, what do you call them? Medals and swords of office and things like that. Here's a, I don't know, is this their cape or gown or whatever you want to call it? Hmm. Interesting little history, but uh, yeah. Freemasons, I believe it is. Yeah, it's Freemasons. This one is civilian fashion and military fashion. So, I think we're like Victorian, looking at like Victorian stuff here. A gent in his everyday uniform and his dress uniform and his lady with her umbrella and her fine gowns. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting, there's one thing I find so interesting is how intertwined civilian life and military life was like in the Victorian era. Even up until World War II. Yeah, another little stall, another little display. So, this is the uh, famine display. Coffin ship, as they were called. Uh, cabin was hit very, very bad at the time of the famine. So, here we go. So, big soup cauldron here in the corner. Uh, this is for the workhouse. So, like, they brought in this thing that workhouse rules so there you go so like the workhouse was pretty much for people who had nothing left and nowhere to go and they were starving to death so they would get signed into the workhouse and carry out labor um, for the state and up here you can actually have so you have the girls yard small garden or court receiving room yard 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 down here at the bottom of the boys yard boys school room room for aged men, up the top then you have the girls school room, so everything was separate, the men and women were separate, completely, serving room, so I presume that middle there, room there in the middle is uh, like the, the chow hall or the eating hall, so you have the women's yard up there at the top, men's yard down here at the bottom, and more yards here at the end, and then this P down here at the end stands for privy, which means toilet, in the death house. The right toilet is right beside the death house. But when you think about it, all these buildings and uh, the amount of people that was there, and there's two bloody toilets, outdoor toilets. Strange. And if you look up the top there, then, for 600 people. Hmm. Strange times, hard times. More paperwork, original paperwork, and drawings and plans for workhouses. So, Arctic and Nile, here you go, there's the classification. Paupers, so is workhouse admits. So, you can read that there yourself. A nice little uh, display here is like your, uh, your um, ticket office for either a train or a bus or something like that. But look at the trunks. That's cool. That is really, really cool. And your little shop at the back room for getting your soap, your life by soap, sun, sunlight soap, wood binds, things like that. I love this, the, the actual living side of stuff like. So, here we have some Irish vehicles from the Irish Military Vehicles Group. Some of you have probably seen some of these vehicles before. I've seen that one before anyway. 
Um, yeah, first cab, Vietnam. Dutch. Don't know. Don't know what that is. Uh, Land Rover, ambulance, the new Nissan Patrol, the old Nissan Patrol. Uh, Ronnie Redford in the corner. Uh, World War II ambulance. 90 and a ferret. There you go. Some nice little vehicles here as well for the display. So this type of display, I know it's not military, but it really excites me. Yeah, I like this. It's just how the people lived. This is the turn of century Ireland, 1900 to 1945, give or take. Um, and how people lived. So you'd like literally most houses was this. It was a two bedroom cottage or a two room cottage. So this was your living room, your general quarters. Um, your big open hearth fire and one bedroom off of it. Um, yeah. Such a simple, simple way of life when you think about everything that we have now, internet and TVs and washing machines. and That's actually the washing machine down the corner. Put all your clothes into that and spin it like hell. Wash it up. So here we go, you have a mangle, that's pretty much your laundry, your dryer. Um, I can't remember what that is. It's like, it's like a, uh, for pasteurizing milk, I think. That and that, that's for beating wheat, I think, and that's for mashing potatoes or uh, cleaning potatoes, pretty much. Um, there's a milk churn um, for making butter. You have a plow. Uh, that there is a turf knife for cutting turf. Um, the other schlons, which are those ones in the back there, which are for making turf as well. Um, that's a turf or peat. When I say turf, I mean peat. Um, it's a peat wheelbarrow for carrying peat, and there's peat actually here. This is turf or peat. We burn this. You can still burn this here in Ireland um, for heat. Heat source. This thing then is for if you've really, really wet peat. Um, yes, it's for making butter. But if you've really, really wet peat as well, it's for actually turning it into blocks. So there you go. Nice little, nice little display as well. So guys, that's it. I'm just bringing it to a wrap. If you like what we provide here at Air and Military Collectibles, please like, please subscribe, and please tune in for the next video. And as always, if you want to get in contact with the channel, there's an email at the top of the video description. Thank you very much.